I came across some rusty practice metal in the bottom of a bucket and I had an idea. I'll knock the rust off of it with a flap disc. It's just a little over 40 thousandths thick, about one millimeter. Perfect thickness for some practice for an aerospace test. My friend Adam Booth, also known as A-Bomb79, worked with me a while back and built this fixture for me for doing things like this. These are just six inch long pieces. I had Adam build this fixture long enough to accommodate longer pieces, just in case. I'm going to weld this piece in the horizontal position today. I'm setting the machine on 50 amps. I'm using a dual flow meter and I've got the purge set on about 15 CFH. I've got the cup set on about 30. To start with, I'm just using a number 8 clear cup to get tack welds on this thing. It helps with filming. It also helps to have a TIG welding machine with a low end start. This one's got a 5 amp start, so it's no problem to tack weld these ends on 40 thousandths material. I'll get two tacks, one on each end, and before I set the fixture up on its side for the horizontal position, I'm going to switch over to a Jazzy 10 ceramic cup. Now that the fixture's up in the 2G position, let's light up on it. I usually make my tack welds just a little bit bigger than normal, and here's why. I can watch the back of that puddle run into that thing without melting the end away and then take off. And that gives me just about a half a second extra to prevent melting that end away when I start. The aerospace welding specification, AWS D17, breaks down metal categories into several different groups. Carbon and low alloy steels is group one. And one of the most common test joints for group one is chromoly, 4130 chromoly. This practice metal is just plain cold rolled steel. Fortunately, they weld very similar. So if you can weld a cold rolled steel joint, you can weld a 4130 chromoly joint. It's no more difficult. All the same fundamentals apply. You have to avoid holding too long an arc, avoid too much torch angle, and keep the hot tip of that filler rod shielded in the argon. For a horizontal butt weld, it really helps to point the electrode up a little bit and to turn up the argon CFH just a little bit because you're fighting gravity and argon is heavier than air. I mentioned earlier that I put a few extra dabs on my tack weld, so here's why again. When I'm coming to one, it gives me just a little extra time to back off that amperage and not melt that end away. I'll just take it out of the fixture, do a little quick look at it, see if we got full penetration. Definitely some room for improvement here, but it's uniform, fully penetrated, and I'm moving on to the next video. I want to take a minute and show you some of the changes we've made to one of our most popular TIG kits trying to add value without adding cost. It's the Weldmonger Furic Arsenal kit, a very popular kit. This one is showing the, the one for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. We also have them for 920 style torches. Let's take a quick look at the old version. It's Furic cups, starting with the 8 and going all the way up to the BBW, the 8, 10, to 12 ceramic, and the BBW. But what we've done is we've added a 4 through 8 standard ceramic cup to make this kit even more useful for most every situation. The large ferric cups are, are great for stainless, inconel, titanium, but sometimes you don't need all that gas and you don't want to use all that gas if it's a Sunday afternoon and the welding stores are closed. So we, we're, we got you covered here going all the way down to a number 4 cup. This 332nd ferric gas lens works with all these cups. So let's take a look at swapping out the normal hardware, the stuff that comes with most torches, with the Furic Arsenal kit hardware. One benefit that you notice right away is it just shrinks the overall size of the torch. It just kind of makes it more maneuverable, makes it be able to reach into tighter spots. And the clear cup that comes with it, the number 8 cup, really lights things up. I started using clear cups strictly to film. I was kind of skeptical, but I, I saw right away they really helped me see better. The number eight clear cup is good for AC and DC. This is a little plate with a bead on plate here with I've, I've scribed lines about an eighth of an inch apart just so you can see the detail. See how well this cup lights things up. It really helps. The ceramic Jazzy 10 is a DC cup, great for stainless steel, chromoly, carbon steel, tool steel, even some light titanium work. This is some 4130 chromoly, and this is the second pass. I'm doing a little pedal pumping here. 
But another benefit of a cup like this is if you get a really good shielded first pass, the second pass just goes in a whole lot better. If you need a little bit more shielding with a little longer stick out, the Ceramic 12 is a good choice. Here's some stainless steel 120 wall tubing. With stainless steel, just a little tip, you want to get that puddle started quickly, get moving quickly to kind of outrun the heat. You don't always just want to weld with less amperage. Sometimes hotter and faster is better. The clear BBW is a great cup for titanium. The bigger the cup, generally speaking, the more gas flow it requires. And this one might require as much as 35 or 40 CFH, but when you're welding titanium, the little extra argon is just cost of doing business. It's, it's necessary. It comes with the long cap, the medium cap, and the short button cap. Now, where would you want to use these cups? Well, again, if it's a Sunday afternoon and you're, you're, your tank is down to about two or 300 and you've got a job you need to get out and it, the job doesn't really require super excellent shielding, a four or a five cup makes sense. It also makes sense for flash tacking. You don't waste a lot of gas while you're just doing a little, a little quick burst tack on some sheet metal corner joints. There's a purpose for every cup. You know, one size does not fit all. The number five cup is great for aluminum butt joints, can actually help with penetration by limiting that cleaning action and kind of focusing the energy on the puddle. Another reason to have a good assortment of cups is sometimes you might get into a situation like this where you're walking the cup on a small fillet weld. You don't want to use a whole bunch of extra gas. It doesn't require it. When you've got that cup right up, right up against the metal like that, it requires a little bit less gas flow than it does if you've got a long stick out and, and freehand in it. A number six is also a really good all-around cup for aluminum. This is an outside corner joint on eighth inch thick material. If you need a little longer stick out than you can get with the six, take it up to a number seven, just increase the argon flow. About two and a half CFH per cup size gets you right in the ballpark usually. And then there's the number eight, which is kind of a really good all-around cup for stainless and chromoly and carbon steel. This little demonstration really shows the difference between the standard hardware that comes with a TIG torch as opposed to a stubby gas lens. I'm using the same long stick out here. It's a half inch stick out. I'm going to use the same stick out on all these cups. This is sped up 4x, but you can see it's just kind of squiggly. I'm losing shielding at that stick out at about 20 CFH. Not very good for stainless steel. Now here I'm using the same exact stick out with the same flow rate with a stubby gas lens and it's like somebody flipped the switch on. Now all of a sudden it's cleaned up. Now if I put the Jazzy 10 on there with that secondary diffuser I'm going to get a little bit better shielding. Not like night and day here but it's still it's even better and if I went up to a number 12 it would improve a little bit more. It just depends on what you need and how much gas you want to use. Well, that is a quick rundown on our new improved arsenal kit. Again, this is the kit for the 17, 18, 26 style. We also have one for 920 style torches. Same cups, just different mounting hardware. If you're still using the old hardware that came with your torch, you're going to notice a huge difference here on steel and stainless steels. If you want to get a closer look, just go to weldmonger.com. Go up to TIG Welding Accessories and then drop down and over here to Furic Arsenal Kits and there they are for the 17, 18, 26 as well as for the 920. Once you open that page up, there's a few other images that kind of clear things up for you and show you what's inside the kit, all the contents and inside the tray right there. And then there's another piece of information here to help you make sure you're getting the right one for your torch. And then all you got to do is add it to the cart 